Welcome back to Photoshop. So today we're going to be taking a look at the clone stamp tool. Now the clone stamp tool is located right over here in the tool palette. And if you know how to use the clone stamp tool, this is still most likely going to be a helpful video because I'm going to show you some other cool options that you can do with a clone stamp tool. The reason that I came up with this is because if you look here at this hair, I was trying to clone some hair and I'm going to go ahead and just grab the clone stamp tool and clone this. And now when I come over here, you can see that the hair doesn't really line up. I want the hair to kind of go like this and curve around. But if I grab this hair, it's going to be poking in this direction and that's not going to look realistic. What I want to do is actually get rid of this like weird little wisp of hair here. So I need this hair to kind of curve over like it looks like it should be there. So how do we get the clone stamp to actually rotate the hair? is what I'm going to be showing you today inside of Adobe Photoshop. Now, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to come over here to this image. And what I'm going to do is just show for those of you who don't know how to use the clone stamp tool, how it works. It's actually a little bit complicated to understand. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clone this eye. Now, the size of your brush is gonna determine how big of an area you clone. So if you want a big area, you're gonna make a big brush. If you want a little area, make a little brush. So we're gonna go ahead and make it just about that big because I'm gonna go ahead and clone this cat's eye. Now to clone, I'm gonna come back out here in the black so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna hold the Alt Option key. And when I do that, notice that the center changes from a little point to this little target. And it looks kind of like a rifle scope site. And what this is doing is setting the area that we want to clone. So I'm gonna come over here to the eye, I'm gonna hold that Alt Option key, and then I'm gonna left click with my mouse, and then it's gonna target that eye. Let me come back in here and reset this so it's normal. And then when I come out here and click again, that's the cloning. So I've cloned this eye to here. And that makes a lot of sense. So if I want to clone the nose, I'm going to hold the Alt Option, left click, come out here, click again, and then we've got the nose and we've cloned it. But this is the part that people don't understand. And what I want you to do is watch on the nose. When I click the nose out here on this far left, I want you to look over here and you're going to see a little plus up here. Now when I click and I move, notice that plus is moving along with my brush to the right. So when you clone an area, it doesn't keep cloning the nose, nose, nose. When the brush is held down, it will follow the movement of the brush. So I could actually paint this whole cat in perfectly into this area because it's following that area. Now, when you are targeting, you need to fix an area. A lot of times you constantly have to retarget. So if I wanted to fix an area and I wanted to do this nose, I could come here and do the nose. And then if I wanna do a little bit below the nose, I could do a little bit below the nose. So I'm retargeting. So a lot of times when you're cloning, you have to constantly retarget to make things work. And in this case, it's not really gonna be that helpful, but you need to understand that if you click and drag, it doesn't keep cloning the nose. It moves along with the brush. So we're going to go ahead and undo all of these. Now, the next thing we're going to come in here, I'm going to retarget that eye so we can see how the eye. And if I come out here and click once, it's going to paste the eye. Now, over here, we have something called the clone source panel. And to get to that, you would just go to a window down to clone source. Mine's already up, so I'm not going to do that. And this is a cool little panel that I don't think most people know exists. And under here, you have a whole bunch of stamps. So if I clone the eye on the first stamp, I can click on this, this stamp and then I can clone the nose. Then I can go to this one, I can clone this ear. So if I wanna clone the ear, I click on the third stamp. If I wanna click here, it's gonna get the nose. If I click here, it's gonna be the eye. So you can make different targets, five different targets using these different clone stamps. Something else that you can do is you can actually rotate the eye. So if I click here, it's gonna be an exact duplicate of that eye. But if I come over here to where it says width and I click this little box with the arrow, it's gonna flip it 180 degrees. Now when I click, it's gonna do that. This is really great if you have a person and you're cloning 
this eye is good and this eye is bad and you need to clone the opposite this eye but over here because this one's messed up so it allows you to clone this eye correctly over here like that you can also and i'm going to unclick that flip it vertically this is 180 degrees vertical flip and i can turn that and move it off so what i wanted to show you here is this little thing right here this is going to allow us to rotate the image so we're going to come back over here and we're going to click so i'm just going to come up into the hair and i'm going to target this area so we can see it now this clone source point is wherever you clone it's just looking at the x and the y of where you clone if i was to clone here it would give us a different number if i come up here it's a different number but this little guy right here is what's important so i'm going to come up here and you can see that is the hair in that direction However, we don't want it that direction. We want it to rotate this way a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the Option in the Shift on a Mac or the Alt in the Shift on a PC. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab these two little greater than, less than arrows. And that is where the comma and the period are. So I'm gonna click, hold those keys, and then I'm gonna press on the right one, which is the period. And as I hold that down, you can see that the hair is now rotating. If I hold the left key, it's rotating that direction. And as I do that, notice that this number is gonna be moving. So once again, hold the Option Shift or the Alt Shift, press that arrow key, and then that's gonna rotate. So what that's gonna allow me to do is rotate the hair. Now I'm gonna probably have to do this a couple times, and that was too much, to get it to look like it's bending into that area, but it's also making it so it's not looking to look like the hair is getting recreated going this way, which isn't going to help me. So in this case, I can come and start rotating the hair to make it look like it is going in this direction. So I can come down here, target this, and then I can paste. And now it's starting to bend into that direction and look a whole lot more realistic. So when I'm in here cloning this hair out and trying to make it look correct, I can clone over top, but also rotate the clone source, which is super beneficial in this case. That's a little bit about how to use the clone stamp and using the clone source panel inside of Adobe Photoshop. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>